Hey, this is Rob Flynn from Machine Head, and you're watching Pit Cam TV. I'm stood in here with one of the world 50 most sexiest people in Whoa. rock. It's Mr. Rob Flynn, ladies wow, and gentlemen. That's a heck of an intro you gave. Yeah, me Kerrang magazine said that. All right, I. You know that? That's a great setup. Thanks. I don't get that one very often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know that. I remember that, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I guess top 11 or something. Was it? Yeah. Yep. Cool. First of all, I've seen and read a lot of um, interviews, machine head interviews, interviews with you, and I can't figure out which is the best topic and the best question to start an interview with you. Uh, well, I can tell you what not to start an interview yeah, with. Yeah, that's what I want. Hey, so there's kids on your record, I hear. Or, hey, I heard you took guitar lessons before the record here. I'm so sick of answering that question. Who cares? <laughs> so. Not me. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah good. You're, you're already off to a good start, so. Hmm? <laughs> um, so, do you, what do you like best talking about the present or the past in interviews? I don't, I don't care. I mean, a good interview is just when someone is prepared and is knowledgeable about the band and our current doings and our past doings and if they ask, you know, good questions and stuff that's a little bit different, you know, like, so why did you call yourself Machine Head? You know. Good question. It's off to a bad start. <laughs> yeah. So you're touring since your since your new record is out or your last record is out. Mm -hmm. How how does it work so far? It's been killer. I mean, we've been really uh, we've got a. Um, I mean, here in Germany, I think it came in at number five, which is crazy to us that we're a top ten, <laughs> top ten band here. And uh, you know, we've been doing basically we've been headlining festivals and or playing main support. We just supported Guns N' Roses a couple nights ago. We. Uh, it's been awesome. It's been a it's been a heck of a run, and we're just out here killing it. And the shows have been amazing. I mean, amazing, super brutal, and kids just losing it. We had, we had uh, when we played at Sonosphere t two years ago, we we had a record of twenty two circle pits, and then so it so when we played Download this year, I challenged them to try and beat that record. And we got to 28 oh, circle kidding. pits. There's 15 circle pits on Adam's side, what? you know, split up the middle, and then 13 on Phil. Who, who counts sick. that? We had a couple of people. I, you know, I told them that I was going to try and. I'm like, we got to try and break the record. Oh so my God. we had them break the record, and uh, so yeah, 28. So who knows? Maybe tonight we might even get more. I guess it's really hot. I, I don't know. Maybe tonight it's better to do, yeah. do circle pits, but. <laughs> who knows? Cool. Cool thing. Ah, oh, you're on tour with. We were on tour with um, Guns and Roses. Uh, Guns and Roses. I heard that uh, Axl Rose fell down the stage because he was, was like drunk. Is that right? In French? Uh, I, maybe. I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> okay. I didn't see that. It's a long show. You know, like yeah. it's like three and a half hours or something. Okay. <laughs> like, what are the differences between nowadays and back in '92 or '93? Well, the first record came out in '94, so we kind of. That's our marker, really. So we're about we're about 18 years deep. Um, I mean, yeah, so many things are different. I mean, there was no internet <laughs> back then, which sounds absurd to say now, right? But there actually was no internet, and uh, you know, I mean, and that was good and that was bad. Um, you know, I mean, I think the the main thing is with us is that metal fans have always been there and you know there's a new generation of metal fans that have discovered machine head and they're they're pretty much the same as the last generation of machine head fans it's all about you know, it's a very intense passionate fan base that we have you know we have the, the most loyal fan base in in the world and, and it's pretty amazing for us and we feel very fortunate very fortunate to have that and um, that we can make this music that still connects to them and and that resonates on a on a pretty big level is uh, is amazing. I mean, for us, you know, the thing back then it was, you know, it, like a lot of bands had to kind of make it on the radio, and they kind of had to make it on MTV. And you know, our our approach, even back then, was that we're not going to do that. We're not going to rely on MTV to give us play. We're not going to rely on the radio to give us play. You know, it was a very DIY approach, and and 
uh, for us it was going to be about touring and earning every one of those fans one by one and that's still our approach today yeah. and you know we can tour a little better now which is great you know we got two buses we got nice hotels and that's the things that have changed from then as opposed to having 15 people on a 12 person bus <laughs> <laughs> things like that no hotels but yeah i mean it's the same mindset what do you think about the new generation of metal uh, bands uh, like using so many electronic stuff and uh, the, the music change? What do you think about those guys who are like, I don't know, 21? And I mean, sometimes it's really cool. I mean, I love I love listening to new bands. I'm not like old guy, oh man, the fucking past was awesome. Like, I love hearing new bands. I love, you know, we've taken Suicide Silence on tour with us like five times. We like love those guys and we love that they're bringing something new to the table and, and you know, I love All Shall Perish and, you know, I've seen, we took a mirror out with us and I've always, I personally always have my ear to the street because I like to know what's going on and I like to hear new things and when some new band comes along that gets it right it fucking it's inspiring man it's like fuck that's killer why didn't I think of that damn it you know things like that and so um, I mean I think that there's a give and take I mean I think that some bands incorporate electronics well I think other bands do it really horribly like when I hear like dance beats and techno beats like mix in metal like it just sounds corny to me like it's just I don't know. It's like a trend right now, and people dig it. And I think in four years, people are gonna look back on it and go, "Man, that sounds so stupid." And you know, or maybe they won't. Who knows? You know, maybe something cool. I mean, I look at someone like Trent Reznor, who took a lot of electronics and blended it to make it really uh, pioneering and kind of change music for a while. I don't think you know that's happened yet. I don't think another Trent Reznor has come along in a while, but. I think, uh, you know, I give any band credit for going out there and doing it, getting a label, sticking at it and going on tour because it's a rough life, man. It's a rough life. You got to get thick skin. You got to take a lot of shit. You got to sleep on a lot of floors and eat a lot of McDonald's. And, you know, if you're out there doing it, then then good for you. And I think that, you know, especially with some of the some of the deathcore bands and like the tech, the tech death stuff, like I think the musicianship is fucking awesome unreal it's unreal i mean it's i think it's the type of thing where people like how they revere jazz now i think some of the tech death stuff mm -hmm. that's just super technical i think that that it will be looked at in the same light 30 years from now you said uh you have your ear on the street do you pick your your support bands by yourself if you're on tour not by myself the band the band yeah you, you choose it like this cool band Let's yeah, take them. totally. Like, and if they if we don't like them, we don't take them. Okay. You know, like we want, a we want it to be a cool package of people that we think are cool to hang out with and or know that are cool to hang out with. You know, you, you want a band that's worth something. It's going to bring something different to the table. We try and have like diversity because there's, you know, a lot of subgenres now, and so Machine Head fills up this kind of bigger metal subgenre. But then to have you know, to have a band like Suicide Silence, to have a band like Darkest Hour, which are coming from two different places. You know, we took out Bring Me the Horizon, which came from a completely different place. And I don't know if our fans really liked them, but, you know, it was bringing something different to the table. How do you feel about the massive cutbacks that Roadrunner is doing? Like, uh, they closed in Canada and uh, European... Yeah, they closed everything. Yeah. They closed every office in the world. What what does that mean to you? Or what, what is it, the consequences for you? It, uh, it's a shame, man. I mean, it's a fucking shame. I mean, considering that, you know, these are like the premier people in their field. I mean, in, when it comes to metal, there was no one better. They were profitable, which fucking almost no label in this day and age can say. And, you know, the thing that was most bizarre was that Warner had all of their rock and metal bands going through Ro Roadrunner because they didn't know what to do. So it's kind of like a, like, why would you do that? But, uh... But they did it, and uh, you know that's there's just kind of going to be fallout. We're we're you now we're still trying to see how it is. We're trying to get a feel for for what's going on. I mean, we're actually uh, we're in between labels right now. You know, we completed our the last record was the one with Roadrunner, and so we're actually in a pretty unique position mm -hmm. because we uh, you know we could we got a lot of different choices that we can go with right now, and you know the world is is basically our oyster. I mean, it's. It's a it's a rad position to be in. You know, eight years ago we got turned down by 35 labels. Now every label on the planet wants to sign us. So it's pretty uh, it's pretty 
awesome. Okay. And so we're we're gonna play it out. You know, I mean, Roadrunner still got a lot of people that we know and love there, and you know, especially in America, they've got a real strong. You know, the, the core people that are there are huge Machine Head supporters, and and we're gonna you know we're gonna check it out. And if you know, we very well may end up on Roadrunner. We just need to make sure that it's the right thing and that they get what we're doing because it's we're not a pop band. We're not you know some mainstream artist. I mean, we're the biggest underground metal band, I guess there is. You know. yeah. What does that mean for, for new upcoming metal bands or rock bands? Um, do you think there's something new which is coming up, like a label like Roadrunner Records? Or what should a new band do right now? I mean, you don't have problems I mean, with you that. Know what, so. You know what, the new, I don't think any new band is going to have trouble. You know, I mean, you look at You know, Suicide Silence is a perfect example. You know, they came out of nowhere, they got an internet buzz, and they made themselves a hot band. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they made people care. And that's that's ultimately all that you have to do. That's all any band has ever had to do for the history of time. Yeah. You have to make people care about your music and about your trip and about how you do it. And if you can do that, then the labels will come to you. Do you think labels are important that days yes you need money yeah. to do stuff and you need them to loan you yeah. money to do stuff But they, you, know, they, they, they you need them don't. to go knock on all of the doors and go hey this is cool or this is not cool you know you need a staff of people like it's you know it's a lot more involved than most people think i mean yeah you can get a buzz going for sure and you can you know even probably put out a self-finance demo and do great stuff but at some point You know, in order to make the whole thing work on a worldwide level, you need something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. And better to have, you know, their money than yeah, have course. to spend your own. <laughs> what's your favorite, and that's a really cheesy question, but I wanted to know, what's your favorite singer? My favorite Or an idol. Singer? Do you have an idol? I mean, uh, as a singer? I have people who inspired me and people who, uh, people who, you know, help form who I am. Um, but I don't have an idol. I have, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for Chris Cornell, Soundgarden. I think he's fucking amazing. Like, super high, but like a lot of ton of grit. You know, incredible, soulful, bluesy when he wants to be. Um, probably that's probably my favorite singer of all time. I think just overall. Um, you know, I love Hetfield. I love Anselmo. You know, Max from Sepultura. You know, I just love that. Just even the way he said, like, everything, <laughs> you know, <laughs> every thing with an F. <laughs> like, I always loved that. I was like, that's so fucking heavy. Um, but yeah, you know, people like that. And then, you know, I love Robert Smith from The Cure. Oh, I love, cool. you know, I'm a huge yeah. Cure fan. And so that that very uh, kind of sad, um, mm -hmm. very depressing kind of side of music, I'm often drawn to that, you know, so... And how do you take care of your voice if you're on the road? I mean, outside there, like, 1,000 degrees in here, it's like, okay, but what, what do you do to take care of your you voice? You know what, I tell you what, it's a lot easier to sing in the 1,000 degrees than it is in the air conditioning. The air conditioning That's what I meant, like, yeah. The air conditioning is that what fucks up my throat, so. Um, yeah, you just gotta, you know, try and get some good sleep, which is hard. Try not to drink too much, which is hard. <laughs> you try not to talk too much, which is hard. hard. Yeah, with and, me. And uh, you know, but you just gotta you, you figure it out, man. Like you figure it out, like what to do, and yeah. you know, I warm up and do a little warm down. And yeah. the category is called pants down, which means you tell a story that you never told on an interview, or you have a story which included nakedness. And includes the band. Mm, and includes choose. the band. Includes <laughs> <laughs> the band. N nakedness or a story you never told in an interview. Hmm. We want the, we want the hard stuff. The hard stuff. Yeah. Well, what could I say? <laughs> I could say something really raunchy, like every girl that I've ever had sex with, I was able to make, have an orgasm, which I'm pretty proud of. And as far as nakedness, I could say that when I get drunk, oftentimes if I'm running through the streets, I'll like stand on top of a car and I'll do the fly. The flies. <laughs> is, it, is it like the elephant the thing? Fly, the flies where you take your balls and you twist them and you put them on top of your dick and then you sit there and you're, you're like that. And, you're like, and I'll flash you and be like, fuck you, the fly. <laughs>
<laughs> so, That's the fly. Go. There you go. Awesome. Mr. Rob Flynn, thanks a lot for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank